Sharon Bennett with City Lights Communications and Public Affairs. Welcome to NetLine. We're here at Merrill Hall at the Center for Urban Horticulture, part of the University of Washington's Botanic Gardens, where it was announced that the UW has become City Light's largest green up partner. We'll tell you about that in this edition of our news magazine. Also, a profile of how our streetlight maintenance crews keep our streets and sidewalks illuminated even in the gloomiest months of the year. And you probably know that City Light achieved greenhouse gas neutrality back in November 2005. But do you know how this was achieved? Well, stay with us for an in-depth report on all of these subjects. Lots of our activity takes place after dark in Seattle, especially as winter seems to go on forever, and street lights come alive earlier than you ever thought possible. They light the way on crowded or deserted roadways and lend visibility to after dark runners and pedestrians. City Light's 100,000 street lights are an important part of our electric service. They carry on a long tradition for City Light. Electric street lights started lighting up Seattle in 1905. While they've modernized over the years, like most modern conveniences, we don't usually think about street lights until they're not there. That's when City Light's north and south electric line service street light crews become our favorite hard hat heroes. About two dozen men and women make up City Light street light crews. They work year round to service and replace hundreds of street lights throughout Seattle. Battling weather and traffic, these two-person crews team up to cover lots of territory each day. City Light relies on its customers to let the utility know when a street light isn't working. We're not out at night too often, so we don't know. So it, it takes people to tell us which lights are out. When customers let City Light know about a street light that's not working, the report generates a list that goes out to crews covering the city. Hopefully, it isn't long before the repair takes place. I walk my dog every night after dark, and I notice the light bulbs that uh, flicker on and off, and especially this one in front of my house with the bus stop. Um, I like to see it on all the time. And I thought it would take you a month to get out here, but it only took a week. The work has some hazards as the crew stops on busy streets filled with traffic to do their job. Driving and looking for specific addresses in a big yellow truck is always a challenge. We throw all the lights on in the truck, count on people to see the truck, uh, and it's amazing sometimes that people miss this giant yellow flashing truck. And we do our best to not block traffic, but most of the time that's just not possible. The two line workers alternate their jobs each day. Today, Gary's riding in the bucket to make repairs, while Craig Reed handles the paperwork and takes care of the driving. It doesn't take long to repair a light once they're on the scene. This part of the job comes with its own hazards. The dangers in the bucket when you're working are all the dangers that go with being a lineman. You're up in the uh, secondaries, right below the primary wires, uh, all the things that go with that, the open wires, the electricity, the rain, the weight, dropping things, uh, getting in and out of the wires uh, that all the linemen have to go through. The lamp inside each street light lasts an average of two to five years. Each light has its own number, which is designated in big decals and displayed on each pole. When you notice a flickering light or a light that is out, please call City Light's street light reporting number, 684-7056. It speeds things up if you report both the pole number and a specific intersection or address. With your help, Seattle City Light can better light up the night all year long. I'm Sharon Bennett reporting for Seattle City Light. Seattle City Light has essentially reduced its greenhouse gas emissions to zero which is a huge benefit for the planet. I'm Kelly Gunther and in this Seattle Spotlight, we'll tell you how the utility did this and one surprising benefit, huge future savings for ratepayers. 
Global warming is a growing problem with growing consequences for the Northwest. This according to Dennis McLaren, head of the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency. The best experts that we've consulted with again are at the University of Washington Climate Impacts Group and what they're saying is that we're going to see continuing uh, loss of snowback in the Cascades. We're going to see the snowpack basically move from 3,000 feet to 4,000 feet. We are going to see uh, rising shorelines. Companies contribute to global warming with emissions. So do cars to a great extent and even hydro utilities like Seattle City Light. Well, electrical power represents around a third of U.S. greenhouse emissions. About a third of the gases we put up in the atmosphere that are thickening it up and causing it to trap more heat. While only 13 percent of Seattle City Light's operations contribute to global warming, the power company wanted to do something about it. They wanted to reduce their greenhouse gas impact to zero. Why? We're a hydro dependent utility. Our electricity comes from the climate. So when the climate changes, it affects us in a big way. So Seattle City Light began investing in its own backyard. Elliott Bay was a beneficiary. We wanted to do things that were here at home. So we have these big cruise ships come in. We put together a program uh, with them to uh, plug into the dock, if you will, when, when that building, uh, when that ship comes in. Those ships are the equivalent of a skyscraper. Princess Cruise Lines controls 40% of the Seattle cruise ship market. And now, while sitting in port, these ships don't idle their diesel engines, but instead plug into shore power. Not only does it decrease greenhouse gas emissions, it makes Seattle's air quality a lot better. Those ships on our waterfront have gone from about five or six calls every summer five years ago to 180 calls on the waterfront last summer. Seattle City Light also put their money behind the state line wind power project to generate some of their needed electricity and pulled it from a coal-fired plant in Centralia. The utility also began pushing for greater use of hybrid cars in the city's fleet of vehicles and began pushing the use of biodiesel. Those biofuels burn cleaner, CO2 is, is uh, the, it reduces the CO2 emissions substantially. Now, Rebenko's commercial fleet of garbage trucks is using biodiesel. Some Washington state ferries have even tried it. And metro buses are now using the earth-friendly fuel. We have an interest in this state because not only do we want to, to use this fuel, but we want to grow this fuel in this state. Seattle City Light also convinced some concrete companies to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, helping the utility further offset their own impact and getting them ever closer to zero net emissions. Finally, Seattle City Light worked with DuPont Chemicals to reach its goal of zero greenhouse gas emissions. DuPont has developed an extremely efficient process in its Freon plants that really drastically fine. reduces the amount of CO2 released into the atmosphere. They've actually found that since a lot of, uh, since a lot of what they do to meet greenhouse gas goals is use energy more efficiently, they're actually adding money to their bottom lines. Now, for every pound of carbon Seattle City Light releases in its daily operations, somewhere else, one pound less of carbon is being generated. Whether we, we release them in Seattle or Africa or Europe, it all goes into the atmosphere and it all has pretty much the same effect, increasing the temperatures of the planet. So the idea is if you reduce greenhouse gases in one part of the world, you've really benefited the whole planet. Seattle City Light is getting kudos for reaching this goal. Well, it's a tremendous leadership statement. It's the right thing to do. It's the kind of thing that other utilities around the country should be doing. It's really a historic act on the part of Seattle City Light. It's the first major utility in the United States that has done this. It's an important milestone for Mayor Greg Nichols, who has urged other cities to do better than the federal government when it comes to reducing greenhouse gases. What Seattle City Light and the mayor have done is said, we're not going to wait. We're going to do this now. We're going to work with other cities around the country uh, and make uh, change from, from the grassroots up. Mayor Nichols, who called for this, now 190 cities have joined to say, we will try to meet Kyoto uh, Treaty climate goals in all of our urban economy. When it comes to carbon emissions, one thing is certain, according to Dennis McLaren. Change is coming and it's going to be expensive. Everyone I talk to in Washington, D.C. believes that it is inevitable that there will be a climate change regulatory system 
Uh, so what Seattle is doing is showing leadership, getting out in front of that, getting ready for that, uh, getting in while they can make investments that are relatively less expensive than in what it will cost others later. The utilities around the Northwest and on the West Coast are already taking into account in their long-range plans that they're going to have to pay uh, for dumping carbon in the atmosphere. By reducing greenhouse gas emissions now, Seattle City Light ratepayers are getting a huge deal. Carbon credits are currently more than 10 times less expensive here than in Europe's regulated market, where they're going for 20 to $30 a ton. So the future savings are enormous for customers. The local benefits aren't bad either, since it all contributes to a healthier environment. Kelly Gunther for the Seattle Channel News Report. Today, the University of Washington becomes our largest partner in the Green Up program, which you're going to hear a little bit more about and get some more information about today. 100% uh, of the electricity uh, now received by the university uh, will be with renewable energy, and that's an important uh, step in the right direction. City Light and uh, our superintendent, Jorge Carrasco, is here, uh, has been working with the UW over the last several years to upgrade facilities and operations in order to save resources so that we can have as uh, small an impact on the environment and global warming as possible. The Green Up partnership is going to be an important part of our reducing greenhouse gases. And City Light uh, recently became the first major United States utility to have uh, zero net greenhouse gas emissions. So, President Emmert, I want to thank you for your partnership in a lot of different areas, but today in particular in your commitment to sustainability, in helping us as a city to achieve sustainability, and as an institution, the university's commitment. When we had an opportunity to work with City Light and to work with the council and work with the mayor toward establishing our role in the Green Up program, uh, this was not a decision that we had to debate very long and hard. It, it had some financial impacts, but they were modest compared to the outcomes, and over the long run, as we can see from this wonderful chart here, our partnership with City Light is, uh, is enlightened self-interest at its finest. We, we help save the planet and we save some money. To me, that's, uh, that's good business. Uh, and, and as we can see from this chart, and Jorge, you'll probably describe this in more detail, we've now saved over $19 million through our partnerships with, uh, with City Light, and that's a, that's a great, great uh, effort for us. So we couldn't be more pleased. Let me just say that uh uh, President Emmerich, we are delighted that we are able to um, have a, an alliance, a partnership with the University of Washington on this important effort. Uh, I'm hopeful that other major organizations, major institutions in the Seattle service area will emulate the example that the University of Washington uh, has uh, set for everyone. Um, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the a different dimension of our relationship with the university. We've, we've talked about the Green Up program, which focuses on renewables. There's another companion effort that focuses on conservation. And I'd like to just uh, call to your attention a number of uh, major accomplishments that this alliance has uh, brought forward. Um, the university and City Light have been working on conservation programs for a total of 15 years. Uh, we're here to kind of commemorate the accomplishments of 2005, but I want to provide a little bit of context over the long-term um, impact of this program. These are projects that uh, City Light and the University have undertaken to uh, manage our resources efficiently and to conserve energy. And over the last 15 years, the University has made something like 350 conservation improvement projects impacting virtually every building uh, on the university campus, a total of 293 buildings. So this has been a, a, a massive uh, multi-year effort that has resulted in very significant savings. Um, over the course of the 15-year uh, uh, period of time, the utility has been able to provide uh, incentives to the university which have in turn been leveraged by the university to make additional um, energy conservation changes. And over the 15-year period of time, uh, those rebates incentives have totaled almost $9 million. These are incentives that the utility provides. 
The university in turn has made investments of their own and has realized a total of 61 million kilowatt hours in annual energy savings when you total up all of the projects that are affected. So that is a, a, a major impact. That accounts for the 19 million in cumulative avoided uh, energy costs that the university is now uh, benefiting from. Um, today we're going to commemorate the fact that in 2005 alone, as a result of similar projects, the um, university has accounted for 3.3 million kilowatt hours in energy savings just for projects that were done in this last year, which is enough energy to uh, power 320 Seattle homes for one year. That's 320 homes just in one year. If you look at the 15-year period of time, the energy savings uh, account for about 5,700 Seattle households uh, in terms of power use that has been saved uh, by the university. So this is a, a, a great accomplishment. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, that's resulting in annual avoided costs of about three million per year that are gonna continue well beyond what the chart is reflecting in here. Well, it's been just absolutely amazing, thrilling to watch City Lights Green Power program and just it grow in just the two years since I've been on the City Council. The Council just last year, midway through 2005, passed legislation to start the new Green Up program and it has grown substantially in that time. More than 1,200 Seattle residents decided to green up uh, at a, at a, uh, the using a percentage of the energy that they use in their homes during a recent special promotion. Local businesses and organizations including Unico Properties, Pagliacci Pizza, PCC Natural Market, and FedEx Kinko's uh, have uh, committed to the program and now the University of Washington. We know that our citizens like to support environmentally responsible businesses and organizations. And on behalf of the Seattle City Council, I'd like to thank the University of Washington for the investment in renewable energy. The UW has done a great, great good deed and uh, for Seattle and for the thank you. Thanks for watching this edition of NetLine. If you have ideas for features to include in future editions, please contact Peter Clark at the email address on your screen. I'm Sharon Bennett for City Lights NetLine.